Hey guys, it is time to do Daniel chapter three. We're gonna split Daniel chapter three into two parts uh, so that we can keep the classes from being too long and so we can have fun uh, taking our time drawing. I'm pretty sure that Daniel chapter three, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace is pretty well known to us. So if I stop it right where you don't want it to stop, then you just have to read it for yourself. And that's a good thing. All right, we're gonna look at Daniel. Daniel chapter three. Sorry, what was that? I don't remember, I already forgot. Okay. It wasn't important anyway. Okay, no worries. <clears throat> wow, you can almost, you, if you look closely, you can see the strong arm through the page. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you remember that guy, Mr. Strong Arm? I can't remember why we drew the beefy arm, but we did. Okay, so now we're going to do a new story. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the king, made an image. What does the word image mean, guys? Idol. Idol? And what else? Yeah. Statue. Statue, basically. Yeah. Now, back then, most of the statues would be like idols. So that's kind of why I think the word is so interchangeable. Today, you can make the Statue of Liberty and people probably won't bow down to it. But that, that's what's going on nowadays. Oh, well. Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and whose breadth or his width was six cubits. And he set it in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Okay, so he builds this idol and I'm going to call oh, it like kid. a dude again. Now we'll, we'll do that kind of rectangular beard and how, have his hands like he's holding his hands like last time. And I'll try to give him a regal, a regal look, where if he closes his eyes, he looks like he's really powerful. Regal, give him a couple of ears. And he's got his little Babylonian back time there where it's scraping, and there's all of his toes, and then his ankle. He's got big fat legs for some reason. There he is, there's the guy. And there you go. Now, he's about 90 feet tall. Ooh, that's big. And about nine feet wide. He's a he's big, so big dude. He's a big dude. And it says he's made out of gold. Honestly, I find it hard to believe that he's made out of solid gold. So probably they made him out of something and then they covered it with gold. Because that's what they would do. Yeah, I don't think there would be enough gold discovery. Yeah, I mean, like, that'd be crazy, crazy. Anyway, so he builds this big old dude guy. And I'm assuming it's a statue of a person, and I'm assuming it's a statue of a man. And we'll just go from there. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together. All right, now this, this is, okay, guys, here's the thing. When you read Daniel chapter 3, it really helps to read it aloud. Because when you're reading it quiet and you get to the lists of things, you go, and this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And, this. and that's what you do. But when you read it aloud, you realize how funny how hilarious this is. Now think about it. He just built a 90 foot tall statue and he's gonna gather everyone together. He's gonna gather them together, right? Do you think Nebuchadnezzar building the statue, do you think this is a very humble thing or he's a little bit proud of himself? I really think he's proud. He is full of himself. He's so proud of himself. And the storytelling makes it sound that way, all right? So when I'm going to read it. It's going to sound very repetitive and very silly. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the satraps, the deputies, and the governors, the judges, and the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Then the satraps, the deputies, and the governors, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Did you notice how <coughs> repetitive that was? Yeah. yeah. Isn't it, it sounds like a fairy tale, right? The way it's listing it, it lists 
the satraps and the deputies and the governors and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces. Okay, did you, do we really need to know every type of person who's gathered together? It could have just said he gathered all the rulers, but it doesn't. And then it says that they all come. And you know what? It could have said, and then all the rulers came. But no, it says the satraps and the deputies and the governors, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces. Now, here's the other funny thing. He gathers them together to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar had, king had set up. They were all gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. It's like the entire thing repeats itself over and over and over again. Isn't that hilarious? Here's my question. Why does the story tell it that way? To show how proud he is. That's kind of what I think it is. <coughs> it doesn't just say everyone gather. All right, Jack, what do you think? I think it's to show like what affiliated it was. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sounding like this is a story written in a way to show us how silly the whole thing is. All right, but we're not done with lists. We're not done with lists. Get ready. Oh, it's, we might as well take the time to draw them all. Right? Okay. Here's a satrap, and he looks like this. Here's a deputy, and he looks like this. Here's a governor, and he looks like this. Here's a <laughs> judge, and he looks like this. Here's a treasurer and he has money. All right, so there's some coins. Here's a counselor and he looks like this. Here's a sheriff and he has a cowboy hat and he's got pistols and cowboy boots. And feet that nobody else has. Yeah, yeah, he's the only guy with feet. And here are all the other rulers. They have feet. It's just, it's just kind of funny. This one is the, uh, the satrap and the deputy and the governor and the judge and the treasurer and the counts, counselor and the sheriff and all. It, it, it's, it's just kind of fun. It's a fun thing. All right, now we're going to read the next part, okay? Verse four. And the herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded. O oh, peoples, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, okay, here we go with the list, the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbutt, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up, and whoso falleth not down to worship shall at the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the peoples heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and all, all kinds of music, all the peoples, then all the peoples, the nations, the languages, that's another one I forgot to do, peoples, nations, and languages. All the people's nations and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Again, it's the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The gold <laughs> image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The gold image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The image that Nebuchadnezzar had given. Do you see how repetitive it is? It's kind of funny. All right, so now we have to draw. Here's all the peoples. Here's all the nations. Here's all the languages. So, um, peoples, nations, and languages. Now, here's a question. Why would there be so many different peoples? Why would there be so many uh, nations? Why would there be so many languages? Maybe he, he wants it to be so well-known. He was well-known. I think it was because the Babylonians... Has, like, has taken over so many countries. Yes. These were all, probably all captives. That's what Daniel was, after all. And so there's going to be all these captives. And so your king, this well-known, known all over the world king, and he's known all over the world because he's been conquering the whole world, he gathers everybody together to stand before his fancy statue that's 90 foot tall. 
And the rule is this herald cries aloud, I want to let everybody know, right? That's why I did my funny herald voice. That when you hear the sound of the cornet, all right, again, you have to understand that we're guessing what all these instruments are in the translation, right? The cornet, the flute, uh, the harp. My version says horn. Horn, yep. Harp. Uh, Sackbutt, which is a translation for, an old translation for like a trombone. I'm not good at, let's just pretend it's a trombone. Um, psaltery, ooh, psaltery I think might be like a lute kind of thing. I'm not quite sure. Uh, dulcimer is another thing that's kind of like, it could be like a hammer dulcimer, I'm just drawing that. And then all kinds of music, so I'll put music notes. Of course, this was long before musical notation was invented. So whenever you hear the sound of all this celebratory noise, hooray, hooray, music and joyfulness, and this will be great, what are you supposed to do? Bow down. You're supposed to, You're supposed to worship it. Bow down, right? And of, of course, if you've got this crazy king who's conquering all the world, and now the king says, bow down to my idol that I made up, well, doesn't that make sense? Because if he's crazy enough to conquer the world and crazy enough to make a 90-foot tall statue and crazy enough to have the story that repeats itself all the time, and he says, all right, I need you to bow down, what do you think everyone's going to do? Bow down. They're all going to bow down. Because what's the result? Oh, and by the way, you don't have to bow down. Um, but if you don't bow down, guess what's going to happen? You're going to the fiery furnace. You're going to go to the fiery furnace, right? So this is a man, this is a king who thinks he's God. Think about it. Worship what I tell you to worship. And if you don't worship it, where is he going to send you? To the fiery furnace. To the fiery furnace. Isn't, isn't that kind of what God says? If you don't obey God, you will go to... Doesn't, isn't hell described as the place of fire? Mm -hmm. Or like yeah. in Revelation, the lake of fire. Yep, the lake of fire, right? So we have King Nebuchadnezzar, who's a king, and who does he think he is? He's kind of God. trying to act like God, isn't he? All right, well, let's see what happens. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans, Chaldeans were some of the peoples that were with the Babylonians, okay? Some of the Chaldeans came here and brought accusation against the Jews. They answered and said to Nebuchadnezzar the king, O oh, king, live forever. You, O oh, king, have made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound, here we go again, hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, <laughs> the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all, all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods. Here, okay, they have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, one, two, and nor worship the golden image which you have set up, one, two, three. All right, so let's draw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not bowing down, right? Because that's what it, or what, mm, let's, these are, basically these guys are tattling on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So that's what I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw the tattling. And I'm going to say that he has no beard, but a giant mustache. And he only has hair on the side of his head. And he's, he's all upset. And he's pointing towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he's saying, they, they're not bowing down. And you can draw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego back in the distance. Here they are standing together. Did you know that trick where if you just draw three heads and bodies and stick a bunch of feet under them, it looks like it's friends standing together? They're not bowing down. What are you going to do, O oh, king? What are you going to do? And it sounds like, it, to me, it sounds like this guy doesn't like them. We don't know for sure. But what does he say about them? They have not regarded you. No regard for whom? 
King Nebuchadnezzar. The king. They don't serve that. They don't serve the gods. Not his gods and not his idol. And so it's all about these guys. These guys don't like the king. Now think about it. You are Shadrach or Meshach or Abednego. And you heard, you've been gathered together with all of the governors and the judges and the state traps. And you've been gathered with all these guys and you hear the rule, you gotta bow down to this thing. As a good Jewish boy or girl, are you allowed to bow down to an idol? No. 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 Why? Because God is the only God. God's the only God. Why else? There's a couple ways you can answer it. Other people make idols because they don't believe in God. That's part of it. And it was one of the Ten just, Commandments just, about They it? don't believe in God. They, f they might think other people don't believe in God. So, they, so he makes the God and he makes them bow down to it. Yeah, they, that's a big part of it. Can you guys remember if there's, uh, do you guys remember one of the Ten Commandments that's connected to this? The God. Yep. There's only one God, and another one is you shall make no graven image. Those are pretty, pretty clear rules, right? Now, what was the very first story in the book of Daniel? Daniel chapter one is about what? Daniel established it in his heart that he would not what? Disobey God. And about what specifically in chapter one? You wouldn't eat the king's food? He wasn't going to eat the king's food. Now, remember how it just, really? That's not a big law. That's not super important. But Daniel decided, no, even if this is just a little law, I'm going to make it really important. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Hananel, Mishael, and Azariah, they agreed. Yep, we're going to do it. Food, food just feels like a little law, but we're going to make it a big and an important law. And guess what? That was good practice for this story. They practiced, even on a little law, that they were not going to, they weren't going to back down. They weren't going to be afraid. They weren't going to bow down and pray to some stupid hunk of metal that a bunch of cornets are playing music to because crazy old King Nebuchadnezzar got it in his head that he wants us to bow down to his stupid idol. Do you think everybody in the crowd really wanted to worship that thing? No. I don't think so. But they did it just, oh, it's just crazy old King Nebuchadnezzar. Just do whatever he asks and he'll let us go on our way. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego we're standing up. Oh, we're standing up. That was probably hard. That was probably hard because they would have. Hmm? Oh, sorry. They they would have stood out. Oh, I like it. I like it. Well, imagine this. Imagine a crowd of two hundred people, and they all go down to the ground. How easy would it be to see three guys standing up? Very easy. Very. There's no hiding when you're standing up. Even if you're short like me, people could see that you're standing up when everybody lays down to bow. There's no hiding. They were out in the open. All right. So they get told on. They get told on. Kind of makes sense that they would. I'm not saying that this tattling is like a bad thing, but they get found out. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, oh, he's in a good mood, right? Oh, my goodness. Mm -mm. Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, oh, he's in a really good mood, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then they brought these men before the king. Okay, so before we move on, we got to draw Nebuchadnezzar in a rage, right? Because it's just 
so much fun to draw a rage. Oh, you can draw teeth and Rari. And remember, he's got that big old, I've been drawing him with a beard. And there's not much room here for his crown. Ooh, that's kind of fun. It's like the word idol is right over his crown. Uh, kind of like a secret message. So there he is in his raging fear. And he's spitting out fire. And he's got <laughs> tears and anger. And oh, my goodness. All right, so he's an angry dude. All right, here we go. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said unto them, it is of purpose. Uh, is it of purpose, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you serve not my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the, here we go again, cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. He says, if you bow down, then it will be well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Ooh. Okay. He just made it. Super prideful. Super proud. Super angry. Super angry. Now, here's one of the things. When you get super angry like this, you know how easy it is to get super proud and say super, super bad things? It's so easy. We got to have self-control. First thing he does is he basically says, if you hear all the music and you fall down and worship the image, well, this whole thing right here, he gives them a second chance. One more chance. But if you worship not, you shall be cast that same hour into the fiery furnace. All right, so I'm going to draw it like they're in there, okay? This is the threat, okay? I will cast you in there. Who is the God that can deliver you out of my hand? Think about it this way. It's almost like he's saying, I'll have you in the palm of my hand on fire. <laughs> you can draw this because he's so angry. You draw it quivering in anger. So he's here. I will have you in the palm of my hand. Now, here's a thing to think about. Now, it's not literal, right? Are they literally in his hand? No. No. He doesn't have hands that big. I mean, that's, that's the point. But he's saying, I've got you in my hands, and I will light you on fire. And this is where he made, I mean, all this is just foolishness and pride, right? But then he says, I'll do this in green. Who is that God? that can deliver you out of my hands. What question is he asking? What does that mean? Who is the God that can deliver you out of my hands? Does he even know what he's saying? I think he's saying like, there's no, there's no God that can take you out of my hands. I mean, exactly. When so. he's asking the question, it's really more like a threat. There is no God that can do it. If I have you in my hands and I light you on fire and I'm spitting fire because I'm angry and my fist is going because I'm so angry, who is the God that can deliver you out of my hands? Now, do you guys know who, what the answer to that question is? Who is the God that can deliver you out of my hands? God. One of the, this is why I love Nebuchadnezzar because he is on fire all the time. It's like he doesn't know how to relax. He's either going to be in the happiest of moods or and who is the God that can take you out of my hands? Hey, Daddy. And God from heaven says, oh, oh, I am. <laughs> right? 
Yeah? It sounds a lot like he's gloating. Like who? Like he's gloating. Yes. He's arrogant. He's gloating. And the moment, have you ever heard that statement, pride comes before the fall? He is trying to say, I am the most powerful. Who could take you out of my hand? Well, he's about to find out who. He's about I have a to find out who. Yeah? Me too. Do, right. do, you think, mm -hmm. do you think that he's, like, by giving them another chance, he's trying to make himself look good? I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. This Mr. is the thoughts I've heard. It could be that he's trying to make himself look good. It could be that I've heard that maybe he really likes Daniel, uh, Daniel, who's not in this story, which I think is really interesting. I don't know where Daniel is in this story. It could be that he likes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and doesn't want to kill him and wants to give him another chance. It could be he's thinking, wait a minute. There's no way. I'm just going to show how big I am. If I tell them to do it again, they'll do it. So I don't know what it is. Is it he trying to show you that it's good, or is it he just proving that he's full of himself? Yeah, Charlotte? You had a question, and then Eva. Well, I didn't have a question. It can wait. It just can go. Okay, Eva? Um, he's also kind of bragging. Yes. Yes, he's bragging about this much. <laughs> I think he's He's bragging about that much. <laughs> Earth. Okay, so let's see. We're not going to read much more in the story. This is a story that we know, but we are going to read the cool, cool part. Okay. I drew Nebuchadnezzar throwing a tantrum. Nice. Oh, I have it drawn on the board behind me. I have to do that after this paragraph. Okay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How are they going to answer, guys? We got to wonder, are they scared? Are they angry? Are they frightened? I mean, there's, there's all sorts of emotions. And then you can draw that those are them, right? I don't know. Might be angry. Yeah. He is saying terrible things. All right, let's see. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, oh, I'm going to put this in yellow. It's good stuff. Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship your golden image that you have set up. This answer is so cool. We're going to read it again. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't have to answer you. If it's going to be, God who we serve is able to deliver us, and he will. But if it's not to be, we want you to know, O king, that we won't serve your gods, we won't bow down to the image that you have set up. I kind of paraphrased it to take it out of the old fashioned language in my text. They say three things. All right, I should erase this and we'll draw some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I can't remember, do you guys remember what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego look like? Did we have anything about them? No. Not really? <laughs> They never really look, up. I put one shirt, one's medium, one's tall. I like that. I'm drawing one of them with a beard. Yeah, maybe you could draw the middle one with a beard. Yeah, I, I'm drawing the middle one with a beard, too. I don't know why I had to. He's really tall. Shadrach, oh. Meshach, and Abednego. And Meshach is really t tiny. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego.
All right. So they say three things. They say three things. Number one, no answer. They say, there is no need for us to answer you. And I think the idea there is our answer is obvious. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to wonder about it. We didn't do it before. We're not going to do it again. That's just the reality. Isn't that cool? It's like, I'm not going to dis I'm not going to defile myself on the king's food or on the king's idol. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm not going to defile myself. The next thing they said, if it's going to be God, uh, ooh, I'll do a different color for this. No, I'll keep doing it this way. Um, God can save. That's exactly what I put. God can save us. Because Nebuchadnezzar asked, who is the God that can save you out of our hands? And they say, our God can do it. Our God can save us. And then the last thing that they say is, even if he doesn't, we won't bow. These are three cool things. First, they say, we don't need to answer you. We already answered you. We're not going to do it. There's no question. We know what's going to happen. But then Nebuchadnezzar, he, he kind of made fun of God. Who is the God that can save you from my hands? And they said, well, we'll tell you about that God. Our God, he can save us. He can do it. He's got the power, and if he wants to, he can save us. But he might not save us. Why wouldn't God save them? What do they mean by that? Is God terrible? What do they mean, even if he doesn't? What are they talking about? It, they're saying, God, God, it's possible for God to do it, but he has the choice whether to save us or not. Yeah. He doesn't always do that. That's right. God doesn't always save. Okay, he, if, if somebody wants spiritual salvation, does God save them? God offers grace. God offers spiritual salvation. But does he always save somebody from getting a hurt? No. 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 We don't always get what we ask for. We don't always get it. it there's a story of uh, one apostle that was killed by Herod, and the next apostle was saved. That's just the way it goes sometimes. And so they're saying, we might be in your hand, right? And who can save us from the palm of your hand? Does that look like a hand? Mm. I could tell once you started saying it was a hand. All right, so there's, there's the fire, right? There's the fire. I just thought that was kind of a fun little thing to draw. Uh, and like they, they're just being very honest. They're saying, we don't know what God's gonna do. We don't know if God's going to do it or if God's not going to do it. But it doesn't matter, right? God can save us? Yay! God might not save us. Hmm. Like, he, he can, but he doesn't have to. Right. So here's the big question. Dear God, please give me a million dollars. Where are my million dollars? I thought I asked. God didn't give me a million dollars, so I don't like God anymore. Does that work? <laughs> Does that work at all? Nope. That, that's, 
That's selfish. That's, I want my toys and I want my fun. And if God doesn't give it to me, then I'm going to hate the creator of this earth. I'm going to despise the one who made such beautiful trees and flowers and beautiful sunshiny summery days. God who makes rivers that are so fun to watch the water rippling that you can stare at it for so long that you forget that you're staring at it and you almost fall asleep. That you can watch the waves crashing against the shore and you're seeing the beautiful things that God made. And you're just going to say, because he didn't give me a toy, I'm not going to like him. That's pretty selfish. It's hating the creator of himself. Yes. Like yes. not being grateful that he was created. Yeah. And so I love, I love, I love, I love, I love this story because they say we love God and, and we'll work for you, but we're not going to bow down to your idol. God might kill us. It's true. God, no, not God might kill us. God might let us die. It's true. But we know God can save and we're going to obey God. And this is the message. This is the message that I need to get into my skull. There's a lot of scary things that happen in this world. Right now, there's a lot of scary things going on in our country. People are upset. People are crying. People are wondering. People don't know what's going to happen. And my answer needs to always be, I won't act foolishly. I won't give in to pressure. I won't just do a sin because it seems like this nice and easy thing to do. I'm going to stand tall like Abednego and say, even if I die, I will always obey God. All right. Any questions? That's where I'm going to stop for here. Yes. I What's your question? So it's like hating the creator. It's mm -hmm. like a man just finishes making a robot, but the robot hates him. Yeah. When that guy created it. I know. I know. Yeah. It's and even another thing, like he probably has like hating him for not giving you that thing that you asked for. Mm -hmm. He may have got given you something you asked for another time. That's true, right? Like you might forget about the other time he helped us out when we decided to eat vegetables and God helped us. Also, mm -hmm. when it it's like if you say, God, can, can you help me get a million dollars? And then you're waiting and you're like, where are my million dollars? But God might say no to your prayer because it's not necessary and you don't need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, God has already given you a lot of blessings. Yeah. Yeah. We're already given you too much. He's already given us more than we deserve already. Yeah. That's yeah. why I, that song sounds so repetitive, but count your many blessings, right? Mm, yeah. it's, it's a good habit to not count and say, ooh, I've got 34 blessings. I've got more blessings than you. No, that's not why we <laughs> count them. We count them not to remember how cool we are, but to remember how good God is. All right. Be well, I'm going to turn it off from there. I had a lot of fun, and we will pick up and figure out what happens at the end of chapter three. And you are absolutely allowed to cheat and read ahead if you want to. All right. <laughs> see you later, guys.